All right, we showed you this earlier, but uh, it really is uh, startling and shows you exactly what is happening in our region. See that smoke just billowing out of northern Idaho, out of Oregon, and even up in Montana, and just swirling into northern Utah and western Utah. It's startling, but it helps those of us in northern Utah understand this dramatic shift this morning from haze to dense smoke that is so easy to smell even. Tooele went from yellow to purple in two hours, purple, basically we've never seen that. Salt Lake hit the highest particulate reading so far this year. And purpleair.com sensors have shown the worst of this is from Farmington to Payson, at least in terms of what we can see on those sensors. But someone who knows better than I do about this is joining us for our in-depth interview, Ashley Sumner from the Department of Environmental Quality. Ashley, I was introducing that stuff about what we're uh, seeing and smelling in the air right now. Anything you want to hit on? Anything you want to correct? No, no, that's all accurate. Um, we are the areas that are really experiencing this and being hit the hardest are uh, along the Wasatch Front and in those areas of Salt Lake, Davis, Utah, and Tooele counties. Um, but we expect as this persists that the entire state is probably going to get some smoke. That is the difference, isn't it, between uh, the w when we have these uh, this bad air from smoke compared to the particulates that we're used to in the winter is that it's not about uh, a bowl in a valley. And, and so people who live in places where usually the air is pristine can get it just as bad. Yeah, we're seeing um, poor air quality or high air um, concentration readings in the Utah Basin and areas that you're right, we usually don't see that inversion air quality. Um, the valley isn't playing so much of a, a factor, um, but, but we are seeing it pretty much everywhere. Talk about the significance as people are sitting at home um, and they're thinking about what their plans are for today. You know, it's Friday, Friday night. Maybe there are plans to do something with the kids outside or something like that. When you see readings as high as they are, at least along the central Wasatch front right now, what, what would you tell folks? I would tell folks to really um, stay inside as much as possible. This is an exceptionally poor air quality day. Um, we do expect it to improve a little bit tomorrow to maybe downgrade to that orange or unhealthy for sensitive groups. So if people can just really try to stay inside as much as possible today and this evening, um, we, we, we do see that it might improve, um, although we are recommending people stay inside as much as possible until we see this break up, which um, might be as early as Tuesday. And, and when we're looking at this, uh, it, it, it feels like we're seeing this shift. Uh, we have some cleaner fuels. Um, we have some cleaner cars. Uh, we have less. We, we've had fewer red air days. In fact, I don't think we had any this past winter, um, or at least this, this calendar year uh, in, the, in the winter time. Is summer now the, our particulate season? You know, it, it's hard to say. I mean, we still do have particulate issues, um, and inversion season is still very much a thing. Um, but, but this is certainly, um, you know, it, it it truly depends on the weather weather patterns and the way the wind is blowing about how much this is going to impact us. Um, we have seen, like you said, cleaner vehicles. Um, industry has made a big impact in reducing the amount of emissions. And so in the winter, our winter time air quality um, has been improving over the past 10 to 20 years, um, as much as 40 by as much as 40 percent. So uh, summer is still continuing to be a really big concern for air quality. And usually the summer problem is ozone. And you were mentioning to me before uh, the before the interview here that uh, we need to be aware this is a double problem, right? R right now we do have ozone as well. Right, this is what we call a dual pollution event. So we're seeing high levels of ozone that are created by, um, you know, obviously the sun and those um, emissions. So we are seeing high levels of ozone pollution and we're also seeing the PM25, which makes it especially important for people to take care of themselves, their health, and really avoid outdoor exertion and avoid being outdoors as much as possible. You know, I, I wonder if uh, the, the conversations that you're in on at the higher levels of the Department of Environmental Quality about how to how to think about these kinds of issues. We, we can think about doing individual things to change ozone and to change the the inversion um, smog, but uh, but smoke is a 
is regional and in some sense global because of climate issues and drought issues. How, how does the state, did, do you talk to neighboring states? Do you need to expand out to figure out how to address something like this? You know, it, it is really difficult because right now we are experiencing smoke from other states. And it is a, a, a nationwide discussion about how to address the concern of wildfires. What really we're really focused on in Utah is what we can do, um, encouraging people to drive less, use cleaner vehicles, um, working with industry to use cleaner technology, and focusing on what we can control within our state while having those partnerships uh, throughout the country. We're out of, we're time, out of time, but, but I think that I, I do want to get uh, some things people can do. You, you check your air filter in your uh, in your home system. Um, maybe maybe uh, change that out to make sure your air is getting good filtration inside your house. Um, if you have an air purifier, those kinds of things, run it. Um, anything else that you want people to know uh, uh, before we say goodbye? Yeah. Um we the the Salt Lake County Health Department just put up some really good put out some really good um, guidelines, including checking those filters, buying an indoor air purifier if possible. Um, if you do have a window AC, try to make it so it's not doing fresh air intake. Use recirculating air. Same thing um, when you're in your car. Make sure you have a clean filter and avoid using that recirculating air. And then um, if everybody can drive less uh, today and and throughout the weekend as we're experiencing this, that'll make an impact on air quality as well. All right. Ashley Sumner, it's an important conversation. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you.